because we have that stopwatch going. Whoa, all right, so we just slammed on the brake. I'm not exactly sure what just happened, Hi everyone, JJ here. Welcome back. Yes, well, a talk of the past 24 hours or so about the Robo Taxi launch that is going on in Austin was this incident with Kim Java, who's a Tesla influencer. And as far as I could see, the only woman that was actually there in that group of Tesla influencers, and she had this incident that was phantom braking. And the question is, was it caused by the sun glare, which is a known issue? She talks about these things, both phantom braking and the sun glare being an issue. I've made videos about both of those things before. And I want to say good on her for talking about it because maybe she won't be invited to future Tesla events because of it. And the other people have sort of brush it off. She did a little bit saying it's no big deal, but let's see. This tweet here from Marco Watts says a Tesla Robo Taxi recently slammed on its brakes, catching an influencer passenger off guard who claimed it braked for no reason. While the exact cause isn't confirmed, it's possible that mild sun glare might have played a role. But you see the sun on her face there. It was low sun, which she talks about. And here's another tweet. This is her post herself, her tweet on X about it. She had a full video on YouTube. I'm going to link to that in the description. It's like a Waymo versus Tesla Robotaxi. It's quite a good video. So she says, day one of Robotaxi testing with 20 initial riders caught a rare phantom braking moment on camera during our Waymo versus Tesla Robotaxi race. Well, I don't know how rare they are. There was another incident just on the first day that we saw as it was going past police cars. It, it phantom braked there when it really didn't need to. It's a one-off glitch in full self-driving mode. Most rides were smooth. Miss Jillian here says who it has been testing, does live videos of full self-driving, has done for a long time. She says Kim's Robotaxi in Austin experiences phantom braking due to sun. Well, that remains to be seen, but I agree. I think it probably is, but we'll have a look at the video and analyze what happened there. But hold on, Tesla fanboys keep insisting the sun won't be an issue for Robotaxi because it supposedly runs different software than my HW3 Model S Plaid. That's hardware 3, slightly older hardware than the HW4. And Andy the German HW4 Cybertruck, which we both experience issues with the sun. And they have put videos of that on X, they're not hard to find if you just do a search for Sun Glare and Tesla and you find these things. And so we also have Sawyer Merritt, who is another Tesla influencer, one of the main ones. He just posts on X all day, every day about Tesla. So that much of an influencer. And he says, tons of direct Sun Glare during many of my Tesla RoboTaxi rides today in Austin. The vehicles handled it with no problem. So the fact that he's posting about that it shows that it is a known issue that some people are having. And so this is Kim Java in the incident. That, that's straight from her video. Let's see what happens here. Let's find out. You guys know we're not lying because we have that stopwatch going. Whoa. All right. So we just slammed on the brake. I'm not exactly sure what just happened, but the car thought it saw something. And this happens in full self-driving. This is something that does happen. That's something that people have talked about being one of the limitations of full self-driving with RoboTaxi is that occasionally it slams on the brakes out of nowhere. You guys kind of saw me react. You can see that my stuff is on the ground. But again, this is why it's in beta. You can see she was a little bit freaked out by what happened there. Her stuff went onto the floor. It was that much of a braking. She seemed to not know what ha happened, but let's go through this again. You can see the sun on her face to begin with. The sun is really low. She does talk about this in a different part of her longer video. Oh, we're not lying because we have that stopwatch going. Whoa. All right. So we just slammed on the brake. I'm not exactly. See that the sun's very low there, down there. So it seems likely that that could be the problem. Not sure what just happened, but the car thought it saw something. Car thought it saw something. Okay, let's move on. And so here's another video where she's actually talking about the low sun. I believe this was shot before that incident. And she talks about it not being a problem or it handling it pretty well so far. But just notice the sun in this video, how low it is and the glare.
both are. It's definitely that time of day when you try to adjust your visor and put on your sunglasses, kind of reposition yourself to be able to see in front of you. Honestly, I struggle with seeing. And that's one of the things that people have talked about with Tesla Vision. What happens when that sun glare is too strong and the car can't see? It's supposed to mimic the human eye. Well, right now, it appears to be no problem at all. It's driving smoothly, no issues. Here she's talking about the hardware and some of those known issues as well, so she does know about it. Hold, these cars are using Tesla's Hardware 4 Suite, which is what you'll find in all Teslas being built today. The safety supervisors weren't really allowed to chat with us, so we couldn't tell which version of FSD they were operating on. But clearly, it's a more advanced version, but it seems like it still has some of the same limitations that millions of Tesla owners have experienced, like low sun angles and shadows causing phantom braking. The cyber cab, on the other hand, is said to have hardware we're five. So it'll be interesting to see how those bills handle these lighting situations. Okay, it will be interesting to see if the, when the cyber cam comes out that this situation, uh, this problem is resolved. She talked about the hardware there and it does seem that there's an update to the software thing. Omar, one of the other influencers, has confirmed that it's a newer version of the software. But the fact that she had this problem and it does look like sun, I have to say, the sun glare problem that it's not fixed even with this new version. And just to show that other people have had this problem, this is a recent post when I did it today. It was 27 minutes ago. This is by Weave. As they say, I thought Miss Gillian's car must have something wrong with it since sun glare never happened to me until today. Twice even hit me. So I drove around the block to film it again and it did it again. So apologies, HW3. That's the hard we're three, 12.6.4. Us HW3 owners are left behind again. So this is older software, older hardware. And so those people have these problems. Look at this. Okay, there you go. So you might have noticed that the windscreen there seemed a bit dusty. And people say that, that about the cameras, if the cameras are dusty, that's another problem. But, you know, do you have to keep the car perfect for this to work? It doesn't seem ideal when compared to Waymo. It's got other tech on there that maybe it's not such a problem, but you can't buy that Waymo hardware and software to run it on your own car, of course. So it is different. Here's another one. Jake Smart says, I love Tesla FSD. However, the, the direct sun issue needs to be addressed. Elon Musk claims it can just drive through and be fine. But clearly this proves otherwise. I drove through multiple times to see if it was repeatable and it was. So this is from May 2025, not long ago. That looks like a cyber truck. Okay, there we go. So before we go on, if you're getting value out of this episode so far, please remember to hit that like button to help the algorithm to spread it to more people. That would really be great. Thanks. That really does help. All right. So this is from Grok. So Elon's own AI, which he wants to be truth telling. He has said recently that they're going to adjust it because he doesn't like what it's saying. So he says it seems to be left leaning, but I think it's just because it doesn't. He doesn't like what it says. So it's going to be interesting to see there's some of the answers that Grok gives after he's done that but grok says no russ it's not accurate so this is in reply multiple users have reported tesla fsd issues with sun glare not just miss jillian forum posts describe consistent disengagements and errors like running red lights during bright sunlight nhtsa or nitsa is investigating fsd crashes under glare conditions including a fatal incident and i have made a video about that i'll show you that in a, just in a second however some users with newer hardware hw4 fsd 13.2.8 and this later than that now, report better performance and Sawyer Merritt noted successful robo-taxi rides in Austin under glare. And we saw that post. While improvements are evident, 
the issue isn't isolated to one user. So that's what Grok says. And this is an article from Bloomberg about that fatal incident involving Sun Glare. And it was from June the 4th. So it was put out purposely, I think, before the Robotaxi launch in Austin. It says a fatal Tesla crash shows the limits of full self-driving as Elon Musk touts Robotaxis in Austin. Federal regulators are investigating whether the system is dangerous even with a human behind the wheel. And this was the video, my video about that. I'll put that in the description if you want to go and check that out if you haven't seen that yet. And in the article, they had images from the cameras from the car because this is being investigated. It says footage from a front camera on the Tesla shows the bright sun setting. Sun glare becomes more pronounced around the curve. So you see this, I think this is in Arizona between Flagstaff and somewhere else from memory. Don't quote me on that, but I think it was. And they lay it out, these pictures, and there's a full article. I'm not going to go through it all again. But this, unfortunately, is kind of the fatal moment. The Tessa sideswipes the forerunner, that car there, and hits that person there. Unfortunately, it was a fatal incident. So in that, in this, you saw the sun in that, and the article says it's just a part of it. Tesla has already started putting driverless Model Ys on public roads for testing in Austin. So this was before they actually started rolled it out, ahead of plans to launch its driverless taxi service on June 12. Bloomberg reported last week, what regulators still want to know is whether Tesla cars will be capable of confronting conditions similar to those in the 2023 crash. And we saw Kim Java, is that a sun glare incident? Obviously, she wasn't hurt, but it did slam on the brakes there. If that was the problem with that phantom braking incident, as it said, not confirmed. This is again from Elon Musk Rock, who says, Fact Chase's evidence suggests Tesla struggles with sun glare, often causing sudden braking or disengagements, as noted in user reports and Tesla's own manual. NHTSA is investigating FSD for related crashes. Waymo's LiDAR and radar technology, that different technology, not just camera and AI, likely handles glare better, with examples showing robust performance. And speaking of Waymo, at the time when Tesla is rolling this out, just in the last 24 hours, Waymo has announced this. The A is going autonomous. Waymo rides are now live in Atlanta, so expanding to more and more cities only on Uber. So they're partnering with Uber. You can book it through Uber. Increase your chances of getting matched. Open the Uber app. Go to settings and toggle Waymo ride preferences on. So that is in Atlanta now. They are scaling. A lot of the Tesla influencers say that it can't scale. Waymo can't scale, but it is scaling in the meantime. Well, Tesla's taking baby steps with the RoboTaxi in Austin and having a few issues just in the first few days. Big moment, another Waymo plus Uber City launch, Andrew McDonald says here. Important milestone for our partnership, our teams, and most importantly for the city of Atlanta. Autonomous mobility is the future, and we're proud to help bring it to the world. So yes, Waymo going from strength to strength, 250,000 paid rides per week, probably more because that was a few weeks ago that they reported that. And zero fatal accidents, zero serious accidents. So they are scaling with that many rides per week now. So Tesla's got a long way to go to catch them, I think. And this was an electric just today too. Tesla asked NHTSA to hide its response to robo-taxi questions. Tesla has requested that NHTSA withhold its response to the numerous questions the regulators had about the recent RoboTaxi launch. As for the agency, it said that it is aware of some disturbing videos in which we can see Tesla's systems making serious mistakes on its first day, and those were widely shown, and they were Tesla influencers, don't forget. You know, they're just praising the service and nothing critical. As I said, good on Kim Java for actually showing what happened to her and that. Tesla's robotaxis are operating in a regulatory vacuum, says The Verge here. 
the federal government has effectively given up on regulating driverless vehicles. That's good news for Elon Musk. I wonder if Doge has anything to do with that. Elon going into government and really attacking agencies that regulate his own companies. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. He did have that breakup with Trump, of course, so there's question marks whether that was going to hold, but that's what Verge says at the moment. And also this one, if you didn't catch this video about phantom braking, there's a lawsuit going on in Australia. I made a video about it. I'll put that in the description as well. And this is what they had to say about this. There's a brief clip from it. There is a class action going on about phantom braking in particular and other issues as well. And apparently there's 10,000 Tesla owners, Tesla drivers involved in this. In Australia, a class action over phantom braking and other issues began in the federal court last month, alleging Tesla has misled Australian consumers. I think that the scale and the breadth of the litigation that's on foot internationally demonstrates that there's a serious problem with Tesla's vehicles. Okay, so that's the lawsuit going on in Australia. No doubt there'll be more probably around the world to do with things like this if it keeps going on. And we saw a phantom braking incident. We've seen two, we've got videos of two phantom braking incidents just in the first two days of the Austin launch of RoboTaxi. So it's definitely a thing. Whether it's due to sun glare, Kim Jarvis' problem, was that sun glare? What do you think about that? Seems likely to me, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments. And right now I'm going to put a related video right there. Do go and see that now if you want to. And those, those videos I mentioned, links will be in the description. And there's a subscribe link on screen. Do subscribe if you want to get more of these kinds of videos from me in the future. I'm doing them at least five days a week. And thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next one.